One night in the month of June 1927, a mysterious figure was standing outside the home of the famous actress Peggy Setter. He could see an open window. Look, it's none other than Fingers Malone, the cat thief. He slipped into Miss Setter's bedroom as she slept peacefully. Opening the safe was cat's play for such an expert thief. Inside he found his prize, a fabulous emerald necklace. It was so lovely, his heart skipped a beat. Miss Setter, a light sleeper, heard a sound and got up just in time to catch sight of the thief. Oh, what a handsome cat, thought the famous actress. Excuse me, miss, I was just leaving, mumbled Fingers Malone. Peggy immediately called the police and asked to speak to the inspector, who was a friend of hers. Hello, Scotland Yard. I'd like to speak to Inspector Badger. Badger speaking, answered the inspector. Hello, George. Peggy Setter here. My dear Peggy, what is the matter? Oh, George, I've been robbed. Peggy Setter sobbed. A thief came into my house as quiet as a mouse. It was a cat who managed to lift my emerald necklace, a gift from the old Raja of Latak. You must get that jewel back to which the inspector inquired, Did you get a look at the scoundrel? Yes, I saw him standing there. I'd recognize him anywhere. Good, the inspector replied. We'll identify the rascal. But don't come to the station. Let's meet for lunch. By chance, Jeremy Fox, reporter for The Clock, a famous London newspaper, was passing by. Skin me alive if that isn't Peggy Setter, the actress, driving that car. Jeremy made a quick and completely illegal U-turn and went off in pursuit of the famous actress. After lunch, Inspector Badger showed Miss Setter some photos while Jeremy Fox looked on. That's the cat, she gave a shout. It was Fingers Malone, I have no doubt. He stole my heart and took my jewel and left me feeling such a fool. That evening on his way home, Jeremy recognized the face in the crowd. Blimey if it isn't the cat they're looking for, he said to himself. Excuse me, sir, I'd like a word with you, he shouted. Who is this bloke, thought Fingers. Now I've got you, cried Jeremy. That's what you think, meowed Fingers as he jumped off the bridge. Better luck next time, laughed the cat from the deck of a boat as he disappeared downstream. The captain of the boat, Mr. Samuel Whiskers, couldn't believe his eyes. Jeremy Fox called and asked to speak to the inspector. He can't right now. He's in the shower, answered the sergeant. I don't care. Put him on. It's urgent, insisted Fox. Who do you think you are, interrupting me at a time like this? Sorry, inspector. It's Jeremy Fox from the clock. I understand that you are looking for Fingers Malone, the one who robbed Miss Peggy Setter's... Not you again. You're always interfering. How did you find out about that? It doesn't matter. Just listen. I can help you find Fingers Malone, but I want the exclusive on this story. Blast it! What choice have I got? Just tell me where I can pick you up. Badger and Fox finally caught up with Samuel Whiskers, captain of the Rosita, on a beach near All Hollows. Aye, aye, I saw that stowaway. He lifted anchor and set off windward. At the amusement park, while Badger was busy talking with the ticket seller, Fox spotted the cat thief. Hey, Inspector, there he is, Fingers Malone. He can't be far off, exclaimed Fox. And in fact, there he was, hiding under a table. Shh, don't worry, my dear lady. I'm just playing hide-and-seek, purred the cat. I don't think it was such a good idea to get on this roller coaster, said Fox. There he is, the thieving feline, escaping in a balloon, cried Badger. See you later, kiddies. Have fun at the fair, mocked Malone. 
Luckily for Fox and Badger, there was an airfield nearby, and they were able to borrow a plane. There he is, behind that cloud, the rascal, shouted Badger. He's ours, cried Fox. Fingers Malone made a soft landing in a field and was greeted by a sheep. Bah! But Fox and Badger were still on his trail. They crashed directly into Farmer Pointer's barn. I thought you said you knew how to fly this thing, said Badger. I said I knew how to fly. Not that I knew how to land, answered Fox. Despite their bumps and bruises, Fox and Badger managed to stay on Malone's trail until... What luck! The 615 to London. Excuse me, gentlemen, but I'm in a bit of a hurry, said Fingers as he jumped on the train. Drats! A tunnel! The scamp has escaped again, huffed the inspector. I can't take any more of this, puffed the fox. Cheerio, chortled the cat. Later that night, the inspector called Peggy to give her the bad news. Hello, Peggy. Badger here. Sorry to call so late. It doesn't matter about the time. Just tell me that he's mine, answered Peggy. We followed him all day, said the inspector, but in the end he slipped away. Oh, what a shame, George, what a shame. But I thank you all the same, said Peggy as she hung up the phone. Awake in bed all night long, Peggy said her thought, Oh, my cat, oh, my kitty, where on earth can you be? You can run from the city, but you'll never get away from me. Early the next morning, at the editorial office of the clock, Congratulations, Fox. Your article made the front page.